from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special Cube conversation here in our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome to the program first time guest, Patrick Morley, who's the CEO of Carbon Black. Of course, recently announced acquisition by VMware of $2.1 billion. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for joining us. Stu, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, you know we love digging into tech. Uh, there is no hotter space uh, than security. Uh, you know all the cybers, uh, you know really exciting stuff, and even uh, your company's Waltham based. Uh, That's right. So yeah. actually a little closer to Boston than we are here yeah. uh, in, in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, when we had green screen, we used to uh, kind of fake it with uh, the skyline, but uh, you know. The Boston area uh, people know more than just Massachusetts tech, but you know a, a lot of you know great technology in Boston. Of course, uh, you know a lot of good technologies, uh, a lot of good schools uh, that have driven things. Uh, you have been CEO since 2007 uh, and have seen quite a bit. Uh, you know merger, uh, Bit9 and Carbon Black many years ago, uh, IPO, uh, you know not that long ago in the past, and now acquisition, as we said, for 2.1 billion dollars. So you know. Give us a little bit of step back as to you know the journey, how we got here, and uh, you know what's it like to be uh, kind of at the helm with your crew uh, through uh, you know all of those changes. Yep. Well, uh, certainly very very proud and very thankful to uh, all of the customers that have been with us for many 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 years. Uh, and as you said when you, when you first uh, started here, uh, you know Boston is an awesome place uh, for cybersecurity. I think it fits a bit of the personality on the East Coast. Uh, and if you just look at Boston in general, there's a lot of great cybersecurity talent, uh, a lot of great cybersecurity companies. And, uh, and I'm extremely uh, proud and grateful to my, all of my employees uh, in Massachusetts uh, who have built Carbon Black over the last number of years. Uh, and of course, we have offices uh, elsewhere across the globe, uh, but Boston is, uh, and, and Massachusetts is where the, the company's roots really, really come from. Uh, and as you said, uh, 2007 is when uh, I joined the company. Obviously, uh, cyber was a very different world back then. And uh, it, it's amazing if you just kind of roll back. In 2007, uh, the idea of a, of a CISO, of a Chief Information Security Officer, uh, was still very new. And most companies we dealt with back then uh, did not have a CISO. They had a, a network administrator or somebody. So that, that's all changed. If you look at security as a board level issue, uh, in 2007, uh, there were certainly some areas of, of some sectors like the government where uh, it had a lot of importance. But outside of that, uh, it did not have the same visibility uh, as a strategic issue as it does now. It's yeah. been amazing. <laughs> so much, uh, you know, I, 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 my background is uh, networking and virtualization. I've spent a lot of time, uh, you know, since 2007 looking at all the cloud world. Uh, and as I said, back in the early 2000s, security was uh, top of mind, but often bottom of budget. Right. Uh, you know, the network people, you know, back in the day it was like, can't you just lock the door or, you know, make sure the rack is secure and, you know, well, we'll run things over optical and therefore we'll know if somebody splices into it from a networking standpoint. Uh, today, as you stated, uh, clearly it's board level discussion, uh, CISOs, uh, you know, rising power in the organization and often uh, dictating a lot of how the stack is built. Absolutely. Uh, there. So, um, Wow, it brings us a little bit, you know, your portfolio, uh, you know, security is not a thing, uh, you know, any customer I talk to, they're like, you know, there is no such thing as a silver bullet in security. Most customers I talk to <clears throat> really think of uh, security as a programmatic effort. So help us understand a little bit, you know, where Carbon Black fits today, and then we'll get into, uh, you know, your, your uh, you know, broaden scope uh, once you're going to be under VMware. Yeah, so the, the, the core founding idea behind Carbon Black was a simple one, uh, which was that uh, fundamentally uh, the adversary was in a, in a position where they eventually would figure out a way to get in. And if you fundamentally believe that, uh, then you do everything you can to stop the adversary, but you say, I need telemetry, I need data in order to understand what's happening across my environment uh, in order to be able to see and stop the adversary. And so we began a journey uh, to essentially being able to collect and analyze all the data that an adversary, that an attacker would touch in order to run their program. And you know, we always have equated it to essentially a movie camera that allows you to rewind the tape. And with all that data that we collect, uh, we, can, we can run tremendous analytics against that in order to be able to see and stop the adversary and understand what's happening across the environment. 
we essentially created a market uh, that's now called EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response, uh, and it's that simple idea of being able to understand uh, and have situational analysis, uh, situational visibility across the whole enterprise. Uh, we did that initially uh, on premise, so we did all that analytics in each one of our customers' uh, back ends in, in their data center. Uh, and two years ago, we began a journey to say, look, we want to do two things. One is we want to leverage that data to be able to provide more security capabilities across a platform. So let's revolutionize, continue to revolutionize cybersecurity by offering a cloud-based platform. We're going to move all of that, that analytics uh, up into the cloud, all those capabilities up into the cloud and offer a multi-tenant cloud-native uh, SaaS platform. And over the last two years, we've done that uh, with multiple services now up on that cloud uh, with thousands of customers who are using it. And the benefits of the cloud uh, are pretty straightforward and they've revolutionized other industries, they're revolutionizing uh, cyber right now. Uh, certainly, uh, you, can, you can analyze data at a scale that's just not possible uh, when that data is locked up in multiple customers. Uh, so that's one big change. Uh, obviously, you, yeah. I just to, to, to want to uh, help unpack and tease out that data piece because yep. you know we always hear out there, and it, it, it almost uh, you know is a bit trite. You know, the importance of data. Data is the new oil. It's the rocket ship. Um, but you know, the value of that data. How much of that is carbon black leveraging the data? How much can the customer themselves take advantage of that data? Or you know, the, this isn't in a vacuum. There are other security products, other pieces of uh, you know, the, that vendor stack that might be able to leverage that data. Yeah, well Carbon Black's cloud native uh, platform, uh, security platform, uh, is built on a, on a totally, uh, it's totally open. Uh, so from an API basis. So you should, we, you should think about it, our customers certainly think about it this way. Uh, as one, we're leveraging that data, we analyze a trillion security events a day, one trillion, uh, just immense. And the benefit of that is if we see something across the globe, uh, that has a high risk score, uh, that's known malware, that might be a new form of attack, that might be a living off the land attack, all of our customers get the benefit of that analytics. So Carbon Black, we certainly leverage, leverage it. Uh, but in addition, the way we've built the platform, customers can get access to all the data from their enterprise. Uh, and they can correlate that data with other aspects of their security or their IT infrastructure in order to build a more holistic view across the entire enterprise. And uh, we also have third party partners out there, managed security service providers and others who also have access to that data uh, for their customer set to be able to run analytics on it. So uh, when, when we think about data, uh, as you said, you know, as, as the oil of, of the new world, uh, we think y y we need to leverage that data, but we also need uh, in this new world order to give our partners and our customers the capabilities to do what they want with that data as well for their own data. Yeah, love that, especially if you're talking in that cloud native world, it can't just be something that, that's locked up and only used right in one on, environment. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we, we track the observability companies out there, the, you know, they, they have similar type of messaging. Of course, data protection, uh, you know, once there is that uh, you know, breach, you know, how do I recover from uh, this information? So that, that, that ripple effect and love, you know, openness APIs, making sure that can be shared. Um, you know, maybe not something that traditionally I'd heard from uh, VMware uh, when you talk about the, the openness and where they're doing. Um, maybe, I think there are a couple things you want to talk about Carbon Black, but want to get uh, to the VMware piece. Too. Yeah, well I, I was just going to, uh, on the cloud side, you know, the power of the cloud, uh, obviously it's revolutionized other industries, and certainly one of it is the ability to provide analytics uh, at scale. Uh, the other piece, which I already mentioned, is the network effect, uh, my ability to see something somewhere across the globe and help help millions of other uh, customers across the globe when I when I see something. Uh, and the other piece is just uh, my ability to deploy uh, quickly and my ability to innovate quickly because uh, rather than having to deliver new software into each enterprise, I can do that on my cloud native platform. So I think it positions the defender, uh, the security teams around the globe, uh, where they can be more on the offensive than they've ever been before because uh, suddenly I don't have to spend my time worrying about deployment mechanics or other pieces. I can focus on what I really want to do, which is I want to secure my environment. I want to be able to understand what the adversary might be doing. So uh, we're real excited about what we've done over the last two years with our cloud platform.
Okay. Um, so the deal hasn't closed yet, but it's been announced that you will be leading up the cloud security group at VMware. Give us a little bit, uh, you know, directionally, where's that heading? What will that mean? Uh, of course, we, we've tracked, uh, you know, where VMware touches a lot of that environment. Uh, you know, uh, with my background in networking, I talked to the NICERA team before and then through uh, what's become a very successful NSX. Uh, Sanjay Poonin uh, with, with the, the AirWatch acquisition and uh, where they've gone, uh, of course, I would expect that that's the closest piece that, that you started out with the endpoint protection uh, with, with that team, with uh, the Workforce One. Uh, so explain kind of the, the, the security portfolio and interesting, cloud security is the discussion because um, that's the newer piece of the carbon black portfolio. Help us understand how, how the whole, all the pieces fit together. Yeah, so, so first I'll just reiterate what you said, which is uh, the transaction's not yet closed, so everything I'm talking about uh, is, is, is pre-closed and, and uh, obviously post-close uh, we'll have additional commentary about what everything will look like. But uh, uh, absolutely, uh, we are very, my team, my customers, uh, we announced the transaction a, a, a little over a month ago. Uh, everyone is really, really excited. And I, I think fundamentally they're excited because uh, organizations understand uh, what Carbon Black delivers today and what we deliver are great security products. And increasingly the majority of those products are in the cloud. And VMware uh, has a tremendous reputation in the industry uh, for the, the technical capabilities, uh, for the value that they provide to customers, uh, and just for the, the breadth of the portfolio that they have. You mentioned a few of them, right? I mean, many many uh, organizations and people think about VMware uh, from a virtualization standpoint. Uh, but increasingly over the last few years, they've dramatically expanded their portfolio, uh, network virtualization at the NSX, uh, uh, the Workspace One uh, as well, which was based on the AirWatch acquisition they did. Those are big businesses today, and they're helping organizations transform their infrastructure, the way they manage devices, et cetera. And so, Carbon Black, on the security side, we've been partnered with VMware for the last couple of years. We've had an opportunity to get to know each other quite well. We've had an opportunity to integrate in two key spots. One, uh, we've integrated with their AppD uh, capabilities, which you can think about essentially as helping to protect and provide telemetry for what's happening inside of the, the virtualized environment. And then secondarily, we've also partnered with Workspace ONE uh, as well, again, more on the device side. Those are two natural points where uh, security, building security intrinsically into that, into that compute stack, uh, we've seen with customer reaction, has a fundamental impact on being able to have security right there rather than having to bolt it on afterwards. Yeah, uh, you, you walk into an interesting configuration. Uh, first of all, you know, as you said, VMware, not thought of as a security company per se, lots of products that absolutely fit in the security space and are there. When you look out, of course, VMware, uh, you know, primarily owned by Dell, there's SecureWorks, there's RSA, those are well-known security brands. Yeah. Uh, you know, how, how, give us how you think of how all those pieces go together and uh, kind of the trajectory uh, of where things are headed. Yeah, well goal, goal number one, uh, once, once we close the transaction, goal number one uh, is to do two things. One, we're going to continue to drive forward with uh, the cloud roadmap that we have. Uh, it's an aggressive roadmap. We've been uh, innovating uh, aggressively over the last couple of years, and we're going to continue to do that within VMware. The second piece is obviously to maximize the opportunity to build security into the compute stack uh, of VMware so that when customers think about security, they don't have to think about it as a separate piece, but it's already there at their fingertips. And then as you mentioned, so that, th those are two big goals right there. And as you mentioned, uh, obviously Dell has a, has a large portfolio. There's other security uh, products uh, within the Dell portfolio. And uh, we, when, we, when we think about that, obviously uh, over time, we're already partnered with some of those. SecureWorks, for example, has been a very close uh, and valuable partner of Carbon Blacks for many years you'll see us continue to partner. There's other parts of the, the Dell family where uh, we have partnered in the past, not, not tightly, but I think we'll have the opportunity to do more as part of the Dell family. All of this means for customers, more value. Like, because rather than having to go and figure it out themselves, we're going to be delivering it in conjunction with the solutions they're already using. All right. 
Patrick, I want to help you uh, ha have you address a, a schism I see in the marketplace when it comes to the messaging around security. Uh, when peers of mine went to the RSA conference this year, uh, they came back almost unanimously with two words, doom and gloom. <laughs> um, right. In Boston this year, Amazon uh, held the yeah. inaugural reinforce, uh, positioned itself as the you know cloud security conference for the industry. Uh, we covered that with you know both of those shows with the Cube and Stephen Schmidt from AWS said the state of cloud security is strong. Uh, VMware very much we hear from Pat you know we need to do over security is broken. Uh, friends of mine in the security industry, Carbon Black's been around since 2002, uh, is you know, come on, you know, it's not just another acquisition, it's not going to be a point product, you know, yes, we have work to do as a whole, um, but, you know, saying we need to do over or it's broken is a bit hyperbolic uh, from, uh, from my peers in the industry. So what is the state of the industry? Is there traditional storage and cloud storage is all rainbows and unicorns? Or, you know, where do you see it today? Of course, we know as an industry there's always work to do, but, you know, how, how do you round that circle? Yeah, That's I, I, I would take say. it, I, yeah. I, and, and you're right, by the way, yeah. I, I hear all the same commentary. Uh, and I think you have to, we have to take a step back and just look at industry, the industry in general, look at security in general. Uh, we started the interview talking about, well, what was the world like in security in 2007? Security has gone from, uh, hey, it's, it's a niche uh, area over here and we know it's important, but don't talk to us, to super strategic, uh, again, at a board level, at a company level. And so that rapid growth has driven a lot of funding into the environment, uh, a lot of vendors, there's over 5,000 security security vendors out there today all competing. Uh, I don't know how CISOs and CIOs and practitioners really figure out who does what. It's very challenging. Uh, and at the same time, you've got the adversary, this third party, continuing to advance their attack types uh, using new techniques. Uh, you've got ransomware, uh, which is a huge industry now driving uh, billions of dollars. Uh, so you have all of that happening, and so in hyper growth environments like that, you get a lot of a lot of vendors. The average enterprise security team has 75 different products, uh, and so and they have to stitch that together. So the, the the fundamentals of what the way you described it, I think, are accurate on both sides. One, uh, security is broken. It is broken. We've got too many vendors, and we're we're bolting it on. We got to fix that. VMware is in a position partnered with Carbon Black to do that I think really well. The, the second piece uh, is that the cloud does allow us, I'm not sure about rainbows, but the cloud does allow us to change security fundamentally because of some of the characteristics I described earlier. And if you take Carbon Black plus VMware, uh, plus what VMware is doing uh, to deliver uh, across any cloud, any device, any application, I think we're in a really interesting spot to help customers get more value uh, from their compute stack and from uh, security. Yeah, uh, one of the things that VMware has always done well is they play in multiple environments. Back in the early days of server virtualization, didn't matter what hardware, they would get that across. Um, their cloud strategy went through a, quite a few iterations. You know, Sanjay Poonin came on our program and said, you know, vCloud Air, we failed, we, we got it wrong, we did it, but today, uh, every cloud show I go to, there's a VMware piece of that. They're partnering with AWS, with Azure, with Google, with Alibaba, with Oracle even, yes, uh, and, just, and, and yeah. IBM uh, recently. Um, but still one of the critiques I have for VMware is, VMware does good at managing their house, but security, Customers, as you said, they've got 75 tools and they're going to have their VMware state and they're going to have their native cloud pieces and they're going to have their non-VMware environments. So how can, you know, once you're under VMware, you know, participate in that environment? Will you primarily be VMware environments and the VMware cloud environments or will it be a broader cloud security strategy? Yeah, well, I think certainly uh, VMware has done a, uh, an amazing job over the last few years of, of really pushing this any cloud model, right? Hey, no matter where your workloads are going to be uh, in a hybrid cloud environment, you know, we're going to be there to, to, to help you and help run them more effectively, more efficiently, faster, better performance, strong ROI. 
and so if you look at Carbon Black's roots, and I mentioned this earlier, one of our core beliefs is that one vendor can't do it all. You have to build on an open, extensible uh, API-based platform, and that's what we've done uh, since the beginning of the, of the company. And so you will not see Carbon Black uh, change our philosophy, uh, you know, we will continue to be very, very open. And I think, by the way, that reflects very much VMware strategy as of late, which is, a, which is an open strategy where they're playing with lots of providers in the marketplace. Uh, again, the, the benefit of Carbon Black plus VMware on that platform is that for, for VMware infrastructure, uh, their products, I think you're going to see out of the box uh, security capabilities uh, that are going to give uh, advantage to customers uh, from uh, ease of use, from the way that that security works, et cetera. And then we will continue to partner with other vendors out there across the market. All right. Uh Patrick, we know, you mentioned how many different tools customers have to deal with. There, there are more new threats coming out uh, you know, every day. There's no way that a person or a team can keep up with all of this. So, you know, is AI the answer? How, 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 how are these technologies going to be able to allow our systems uh, to be able to protect us better uh, and update? You know, we haven't talked about AI yet. I know it does fit we into have your to talk portfolio. About AI. So <laughs> and just, just understand how, uh, you know, the, the systems and the software and the solutions are going to help enable uh, teams to be able to keep up with, you know, the, the, the rapidly expanding and changing landscape in security. Yeah, I, AI is a tool. Uh, we use it uh, and uh, just as I've mentioned, cloud, right? Along with the, the ability to analyze uh, trillions of events on a daily basis, uh, things like uh, AI uh, can play a very significant role in helping me to understand what's happening across very large corpuses of data. And so we use a lot of it. Uh, and that allows us to understand when there's an anomaly somewhere across the globe on some system, some endpoint uh, or device uh, anywhere across the globe and then leverage that to help our other customers. Uh, so AI will is playing an important part. It will continue to play an important part. But AI leverages the data that we collect. So if you go back to uh, where Carbon Black is today with all that data that we're analyzing, one of the really interesting things is VMware today has 70 million VMs. 60 million of those are on-prem, 10 million of them are on the cloud. Part of the benefit that Carbon Black uh, gets from VMware is we're going to get all this additional telemetry that we're going to be able to, again, consume, leverage AI-like uh, capabilities uh, to, to, to help with the analysis of that, and again, provide more customer back to the value on seeing and stopping the adversary. Uh, that also extends to uh, what VMware is doing on, on the device side with Workspace ONE, et cetera. So there's a lot of opportunity over the coming quarters and years to provide more value for customers uh, in understanding what's happening across their environment uh, because of all of the, the touch points we're going to have as part of the VMware compute stack. All right, uh, Patrick, uh, final thing, uh, what does this mean for your customers? You know, I think back to, you know, not that long ago you did an IPO, you know, what would that mean for the growth, the investment into technology, in, in growing the team? Uh, now, uh, you know, as in, in industry parlance, uh, you know, you had another exit, uh, and you, you will be part of VMware, uh, so uh, we might not get as much visibility into the specific revenues and the hiring that you're doing there, but what will this ultimately mean for uh, Carbon Black's current and potential future customers. Yeah, so we have over 5,000 global customers out there today, and uh, first and foremost, it's going to mean that, uh, more investment uh, from a product roadmap standpoint. If you look at 2019, this year, the number one area of investment for Carbon Black was in R&D. And as we move forward, again, post-close, uh, you, our customers are going to see continued investment in the platform, in our cloud uh, security platform, in order to ensure we continue to bring more capabilities to market. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, in conjunction with that, uh, do everything we can to integrate in with uh, the, the VMware product portfolio, again, so that security is not bolted on, but it's intrinsic uh, to the compute stack. And so, uh, I think that's the biggest thing. I have had the opportunity to go out and speak to many customers over the last four weeks. Customer and partner reaction has been outstanding. They get it, they understand it, they understand that there's a better way, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing as part of VMware. Yeah, uh, any surprising nuggets in the last month uh, talking to the customers and partners more that, uh, that you've learned? 
Uh, it's going to sound self-serving, but it's, it's the truth. I, I will tell you that the VMware reputation out there uh, is outstanding. I mean, I, 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 and I have been surprised at how little I have to do to tell them why this makes so much sense. They get it, uh, the majority of our customers get it, they understand the, the possibilities of what we can provide. And there's a level of excitement out there, uh, again, with our customers and partners. It's just, it's awesome. Patrick Morley, CEO of Carbon Black, thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE. Stu, thanks. All right, uh, lots of coverage, of course, uh, through 2019 and gearing up for 2020, where we'll all have perfect hindsight, I'm sure. Uh, check out thecube.net for the events we've been at, search where we're going to be, and please reach out if you have any questions. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.